Anyone faced with medical problems knows the fear of putting your life into the hands of another. How terrible then for a man of medicine to ignore the first tenet of the Hippocratic Oath. First, do no harm to your patient. Movie mad doctors come in many varieties. There is benevolent but misguided. Embittered and vengeful. You will be soon as big as a giant. Or, like all the others, dead. Inspired, but misunderstood. For years I worked to change your appearance, make you talk. Get you in danger all I've done for the sake of your stupid animal jealousy. And, of course, just plain crazy. Six murders committed all in the same circumstances. The evidence points here. Another one! One of the greatest of all movie mad doctors was Lionel Atwill. It is my theory that one of us in the past, from dire necessity, was driven to cannibalism. The memory of that act was hammered like a nail to the mind of that man. Shrewd and brilliant, he could conceal his madness from the human eye, even from himself. The mutant population was reduced to one panther creation in the film Terror is a Man. Francis Lederer played the maniacal medic. I shall succeed in creating a higher, a perfect man. An actor is, gets a job here or there, if he takes it, he likes it, and then he does it. The mad genius always has a moment to elaborate his theories, but these explanations often had a fascinating logic that rarely occurs in nature. But a talented actor, even when confronted with a script filled with cliches, could make it dramatically valid and disturbing. Put him up, man. Bright idea to kill me in my own lab and let people think that I'm the bat. But you had to kill me first. What was it to be? Ambush? And clever as you are, you're not smart enough to do that. Nor were you smart enough to find the money, though you came quite close to it. But I know where it is. And when you're dead with that sign pinned on your chest, I'm going to collect it and live happily ever after. He destroyed himself. How true that will be. Well, goodbye, Bat. Here's a serum that will heal you whether you're rabid or not. Born in Manchester, England, George Zucco brought wide-eyed delight to his psychotic physicians. During the 1940s, he alternated from small roles in major productions and larger roles in second features. Gentlemen, I wish you were here to see the proof of my claim that the transfusion of blood between different species is possible. A few moments ago, Petro was a man, a harmless, good-natured man. He's no longer human. He's a wolf, snarling, ferocious, lusting for the kill. You're looking at a scientific miracle, gentlemen. A perfect gentleman a kind man who was always never never he was the perfect example of what ben bard my teacher tried to teach me about acting he said turhan don't do too much work the author has done it for you already and you know i always remember that there is a man who sat and wrote those lines for me i just have to without giving too much. I just have to try to do with those lines what he, what he had meant to do. And George was perfect with it. You're not afraid? I ain't got no reason to be afraid. Yeah, that's right, Peter. There's nothing to be afraid of. Nothing at all. Plastic surgery was first popularized after World War I. 
Doctors made great strides recreating the faces of wounded soldiers. But what can be done can be undone. Witness the revenge by Surgeon De La Lugosi in Black Dragons. I was necessary to the completion of his plan. Instead, he inoculated me with an insidious serum which quickly transformed me into this horrid monster you see before you. <laughs> and you must go on living. One of the things people, I think, are afraid of is that there's so many things being done to us that people don't, the people doing them don't feel the need to explain to us. You know, you go to the doctor and they tell you to lay down. You say, yeah, but it's my big toe. Well, just lay down. Well, the first thing, you feel entirely vulnerable. You don't know what the hell he's going to be doing down there. You know, and you're like, well, why am I laying down? It's my foot that hurts. Why can't I just stick my foot out and you look at it? And this medicine and scientists, they're, 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 they have this veil of secrecy where they will not tell the patient what's going on. No one can hear you. Let me go. Let me go. You be policeman. He stood there and asked me what the tank was used for. Now I will show you. What you going to do? You will see. Audiences turned out in droves to experience the latest variation on a recurring theme. Most of the, the films that he was in, he had very little in the way of makeup that changed his appearance and his look. So it was interesting from that aspect. since you people came to this town. Now, it's my job to find out who stole those bodies. Karloff's B pictures for Columbia were often prescient. In The Devil Commands, Boris used radio waves to communicate with the dead. That hasn't quite happened yet. Let me out! Let me out! Every time Helen has tried to speak to me since she died, Anne has been somewhere near. What are you trying to tell me? Anne is the key. Anne cannot leave.
Apropos of these films, Boris once spoke about a certain tyrannical studio chief whose vulgarity was legendary. Now, Boris in real life was the most gentle of men. But he recalled this studio executive when he was talking to me and said, oh, he was a monster. I laughed and replied, you realize, of course, what you just said. Among those impressionable moviegoers who found himself fascinated with the idea of following in Boris's footsteps was a young entrepreneur named Hugh Hefner. It was, uh, you know, silent gun shot in 8 uh, millimeter, and uh, done with a couple of friends, and it was naturally it had a horror theme. To be immortal, never to die, is a fantasy that has intrigued mankind since the beginning of history. In a way, writing this kind of film is like taking dictation from the dead. It was the summer of my summer of 42. Yeah, and I started the girl I had a crush on. I did my own bit for the furtherance of medical science. Did you know that your charming little wife and her wise old guardian were planning to have you certified? They want to put you away. Forgive me, Louise. You're not safe with me. Uncle Francis, I've been trying to get you. Uncle Francis, he must be stopped. He's out of his mind. After the unthinkable tortures inflicted in the name of medicine during World War II, Films created the ultimate horror hybrid, the Nazi mad doctor. Is there anything you require? Yes. The impossible. A live brain. Mad. All of you. Aside from the budget, the only thing inconsequential about this film was the amount of critical praise it received. We knew at that time that we had wardrobe for Nazis, you know, at Western costume, because we saw them. We went down there and said, how much, you know, the Nazis against the Indians? <laughs> oh, we'll go with the Nazis. That sounds like a good plan. <laughs> and we can afford the Nazis, and so we don't have to go any further than that. Director Georges Frangu made surgery breathtakingly horrific in Yeux Sans Visage, determined to restore the beauty of his disfigured daughter. Pierre Brasseur instead creates horror and madness. Peter Cushing was similarly obsessed with Sue Lloyd in Corruption. <laughs> I'll call the police. I'll tell them you're mad. Who do you think they'll believe? You or me? <laughs> P. 
Peter was born like two centuries too late. He, he really was. He was an 18th century man. The way he moved, if you watch him, you know, his body movements, his voice, everything. And, uh, and he, he was perfect. You killed me! Peter Cushing based his approach on the real-life Dr. Robert Knox, the Edinburgh surgeon and teacher. Fresh as a new cut cabbage. Excellent. I'll give you seven guineas. Reprobates named Burke and Hare supplied Knox with suspiciously fresh cadavers, but he turned a blind eye to them. Literally, he only had one good eye. Nice and fresh, sir. Just a week in the grave. Mm. Easy now, Jackson. We don't want it to fall apart in the brine. No, sir. She's a compound. Like Keith. Peter Cushing and I joined Vincent Price for Scream and Scream Again. This is a pulp story. I don't know if you've read it, but it was, it's real pulp. Chris brought into it a, something absolutely wonderful. He brought in a kind of future uh, of what is virtually happening today, you know, using body parts. We are, we are getting to that stage. And brought in a political statement, which was not in the picture. And um, once he had that as a thematic thing, the picture could do no wrong. You know, it's just visualizing it. It was more or less the, the pulp picture. By the 1970s, the traditional movie mad scientist was still going strong. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a dear friend. Your wife no fives. But you I will kill. But you can't, Doctor. I am already dead. The well, what, sir? The guitar. The ten curses visited upon the pharaohs before Exodus. Nine shall die. Nine eternities in doom. Uh, curse of boils, of bats. Frogs? Of frogs, yes. And the curse of blood. That's not a common thief, sir. Then, Inspector, you are faced with an impossible task. Well, there's no force in all the world could win a fight against such a supreme opponent. Films like this one were cheaply produced, but they still delivered what fans really wanted. Plenty of atmosphere and decidedly creepy characters. lives that you think have been wasted in the cause of this experiment actually have brought us closer to that lifelong dream of longevity eternal youth I will not give up the work of a lifetime simply because you think I'm mad 
As is often the case with horror films, audiences paid little attention to the complaints of critics and other official naysayers. When we finally got him aboard, he was half conscious, so we tried to revive him. He turned into a raving lunatic. Killed one of my men before I finally got a bullet in. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. But you will witness scenes so frightening that your mind will not be able to accept what you see. But don't say we didn't warn you. The mad doctor of Blood Island is coming your way soon. And he's waiting for you. Why don't you pay him a visit? No appointments are necessary. But bring along your courage. You will need it. H.G. Wells prophetically dealt with genetics with his novel, The Island of Dr. Moreau, in which a scientist transforms animals into quasi-humanoids by vivisection, gene splicing in the most literal sense. It's happening already. No! 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 You are an animal. Most real doctors are not certifiable, of course, at least we hope not. But this glimpse into medical madness should give you pause the next time somebody says to you, Trust me, I'm a doctor. <laughs>